Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. This is, we're doing our budget and string commanders, continuing to look at the EDH rec themes, and we're doing budget under $2 for these themes. This theme this week is our plus one, plus one counter, which is a big one for me. So plus one, plus one counter theme. If you've seen any of my budget deck techs, you'll know that um, my plus one, plus one counters are one of my go-tos. It's one of my most used uh, sub-themes. So this is something I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, this allows you to get extra value from any creatures on the battlefield, especially combining tokens and plus one, plus one counters. That's uh, just so much like basically free value. You know, I, I just maybe a bad way of putting it extra value on things yeah kind of multiplying the effective value anyway uh, this can also help a great deal if you're aiming for a commander damage win con commander damage 21 is not easy to do especially if you're looking to like one shot or something plus one plus one counters can at least get you into the range where you're like probably able to do it with two shots like two attacks not just one, especially if you got double strike, then hey, you're probably set, right? Oh, please hit like and subscribe. It uh, it makes a big difference, and uh, I don't. I people don't seem to like it anyway. Anyway. I always hit like because I want to make sure I don't re-watch the same video, which is probably not what I should be saying, but yeah, anyway. In the 99, uh, Micaeus the Lunark for X and a white, he enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters, great. Um, for Tap him, put a plus one plus one counter on Micaeus, or uh, Micaeus, Mickey, I, Micaeus, Micaeus I think is what I should say. Ink tap him, uh, remove a plus one plus one counter from Micaeus. Put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. Each. Oof. Especially if you're doing with proliferate, that is great because it will get you your first plus one plus one counter down. And then after that, you can just proliferate a whole bunch of extra ones. And it'll be 45 cents. Herald of the Secret Stream, three in a blue for a two, three. Creatures you control with plus one, plus one counters on them can't be blocked. Can't be blocked. Just, you're going to get plus one, plus one counters on all your creatures, and it's just going to make them all unblockable. This works so well with um, Merfolk in general. It's, like, Merfolk are really good at getting plus one, plus one counters down too, so there's just a lot of synergy there. 112. Finally, Risk Card, Pima, Renegade for two and uh, green. It's a 2-2. Two, two. This is an elf. Speaking of plus one, plus one counters, elves are great at that too. I'll be making a video on that soon. And when when he enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. My son is here again because it's the weekend. I'm hoping he doesn't. we don't end up with a bunch of outtakes like last weekend. Each creature you control with a with a counter on it has tap to add one green. So they're basically mana dorks. All of your creatures, just boom, mana dorks. 25 cents only. You put plus one, plus one counters down and make two, any two creatures you want into mana dorks. For three mana. Sorry, three mana for two mana dorks is already very good value, but Number five. Okay, Gargus Vicious Watcher. Um, here, I'm gonna have a little T. Twinning C. Not a sponsor, but I love it. Three green green. Uh, this is a Hydra, an eight seven Vigilance Hydra. So eight seven is not messing around. I mean, it costs six mana, so you'd hope so. Hydra spells you cast cost four less to cast. Four is just an insane amount of cost reduction. Four is, like, ridiculous. Whenever a creature you control becomes target of a spell, target of a spell, 
Gargos, Vicious Watcher fights up to one target creature you don't control. Oh, that is like... So you're gonna be doing 8 damage to creatures. Remember, when they fight, they exchange damage. So if you make him fight too many times in one turn, it's probably gonna take him out, right? You're gonna be sending him back to the command zone. So, plus one, plus one counters are great for him, or indestructible. He is a weird one because he doesn't really have any listed mechanics that are great for plus one, plus one, like there's no actual direct synergy. Him being able to fight and having the plus one, plus one counters is a big advantage. And also, um, Hydras in general are really good with plus one, plus one counters, so you can get a lot of extra value there too. Anyway. Uh, 74 cents. Okay. Uh, Hydra Broodmaster for Green Green. And this is only a 7-7, seven, seven, so relatively not that impressive. But XX Green for Monstrosity X. So you pay for every 2 mana and then green you pay. You get a plus 1, plus 1 counter and you can just keep stacking them up, right? So when it becomes monstrous, create X green green XX green Hydra creature tokens. Again, so you're gonna hopefully pay a fair amount for that, right? So if you pay even like eight, let's say, then it X is four and four and green. So eight and green, nine total would give you four, four, four creatures. Um, or sorry, four, four, four Hydras. So that's very good. Um, very abusable. 25 cents, Vastwood Hydra, uh, X green green. When it enters the battlefield, put plus X plus one plus one counters on it. Again, Hydras love their plus one plus one counters. And when it dies, you may distribute the number of plus one plus one counters on equal to the number of plus ones on him to any number of target creatures for 113. So basically, this is gonna come in with a whole pile Probably you're gonna proliferate and make the pile bigger, and then when it gets taken out, you're just gonna move all of those plus one, plus one counters to any creatures, however you want. Um, this is a, just very powerful. Anyway, over protect for one in the green as an instant. Again, every time a spell gets cast on one of your creatures, including Gargus, Gargus is gonna fight another creature. So pretty much any spell someone casts, any targeted removal, any spell you cast directly on things is targeted removal, essentially. It's creature removal. So uh, anyway, target creature you control gets plus three, plus three, great start, gains trample, hexproof, and indestructible until end of turn. So you're gonna cast this on your Gargus. He's gonna get plus three, plus three, making him an 11, 10, I believe. And then he's going to be indestructible as well. So he can fight. However many times you can cast spells on him, he'll just keep fighting, or him or any other creature you have. He'll just keep fighting things. And uh, because he's indestructible, he's never gonna get taken out. And then you could still attack with him after. That's kind of the nice thing about the fight mechanic is that it not just removes things, it keeps, you're still on tap, so you can still attack. Insane. 28 cents. Number four. Bright Palm Soul Awakener. So, not your business. Yeah, okay, I'm done. One red, green, white, once again, Naya. So, a Bright Palm Soul Awakener is in 2,672 decks. I think I forgot to say how many decks Gargas was in, but anyway. Um, okay, uh oh, my son's coming. So, he's a Pikachu. Take it easy. Take it, yeah, I do say take it easy. Thank you, Mason. Very helpful. Um, so this one I think is the most like directly a plus one plus one commander. Um, pretty much everything else on this list is plus one plus one has synergy or it's like a combination of plus one plus one and another thing. So this is the most like I look at and go, yep, that's about plus one plus one counters. Um, so again, he has backup, sorry, 4-3, first of all, for 4 mana, not great, but backup 1. So when this creature enters the battlefield, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following ability until end of turn. Uh, so whenever this creature attacks, 
uh, double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature that can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn. So um, makes it unblockable to power creatures with power two or less and um, doubling the no number of plus one plus one counters. Remember, the creature who gets the backup has that. Also, Bright Palm has that. Okay, so when Bright Palm attacks, he's going to choose another creature to get a number of plus one plus one counters, or double the number of plus one plus one counters, and can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Um, that will make for some pretty difficult decisions for your opponent. Anyway, 25 cents. Okay, so here I'm trying to cover all the colors here. Thickest in the thicket. I actually just picked up one of these. Three green green for an enchantment and when it enters the battlefield, put X plus one plus one counters on target creature. Where X is that creature's power. This is always good in a plus one plus one counter deck and this is crazy, right? You're gonna put this down, you double the, or you're gonna put all of these plus one plus one counters equal to its power. So if it already has plus one plus one counters, just putting a whole bunch extra on there, and then uh, you're gonna have a bright palm double that. So you're basically quadrupling its power in one turn. At the beginning of your end step, draw two cards if you control a creature with the greatest power or tied for the greatest power. If you don't have the greatest power after that, that's crazy. I don't know what game you're playing. Your meta must be insane. Um, probably you're going to dra be drawing a card every turn as well, is what I mean. Anyway, 75 cents. Forgotten Ancient 3 in the green for this elemental. 0 3 elemental. Whenever a player casts a spell, you may put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Forgotten Ancient. So he's just going to keep getting these plus 1 plus 1 counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may move any number of plus one plus one encounters from Forgotten Agent onto another creature, or onto other creatures, sorry. So you, basically you can stack them up, proliferate, things like that, and then you're ju just gonna like distribute them to like whoever you want, however you want. Once again, put them a whole bunch on that one creature and then double them, or even Get him attacking and double the number on him and then uh, distribute them the next turn. Um, very flexible in that sense. Anyway, 50 cents. I think I said that already, but anyway. Anem Palak Pakal. Pakal. I see, keep saying Palak in my head. I don't know why. Thousandth Moon. One and then Boros, so red white. For a one, two, whenever you attack with one or more creatures or non gnome creatures, Put a plus one plus one counter on Anem Pakal. Still doing it. Then create X11 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. Where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on her. So just like put a whole pile of those plus one plus one counters on her. And then every time anything that's not a gnome attacks. It's just going to like swarm them with gnomes that to attack with auto attacking gnomes that is just crazy i think it's also really nice with a boros strategy because like boros is usually about making that one big thug that comes in and smacks them this is like kind of very opposite and normal what i think of as a normal boros strategy in a way one dollar number three my son's walking around. I, I don't know why he's pacing. So if you can hear the walking, that's what it is. Uh, Magis Lucia Kane. All right, so she's in 3,560 decks. So that's not too bad. It's not that high either, really. Um, so she is a one green, blue, red. So she's teamer, one, one. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Okay, it's not great, it's not bad. Um, tap, add two colorless. Um, I'm getting all dry mouth again. Uh, when you next cast a spell with X in its mana cost or activate an ability with X in its activation cost this turn, copy that spell or ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. Oh my gosh, right? So any X spell you can make a copy of, 
including creatures, right? This will work with creatures. And there's just so many of these big expel creatures. Expel and plus one, plus one might sound kind of weird in combination. Teamer really makes it work. Teamer is especially good at those expels. Not so good at plus one, plus one counters because there's no white, but it has green, which is kind of the main color for that, I think. So yeah, you can get a just crazy amount of synergy out of that. Anyway, 53 cents. Okay, Zoanthrope. I actually hadn't seen this before. I ordered one immediately. Um, well, I put it in my basket, I should say. Uh, X, uh, blue and red, blah, blah, blah. I keep wanting to say green. It has ravenous. Okay, ravenous is what really makes this work. Okay, I actually wrote that on the previous slide and didn't say it, but ravenous is what I'd be looking at, just as many ravenous cards as possible. Ravenous, they come in, they get X plus one plus one counters, and if, I, I believe it's three or more, five or more, okay? If X is five or more, you get to draw a card as well. So this is gonna be like a card draw keyword for you, on top of just being like really valuable as well. So anyway, flying word two, this is gonna be whatever you, you cast for X, right? And when it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to any target. Just automatically X damage to any target as well. So basically creature removal or even better, maybe player removal. Especially if you're copying this, that's twice, right? Gonna do it twice. Uh, whew, that's mean. Anyway, 39 cents. Uh, Turvigon, Turvigon, uh, I don't know. X, uh, one in the green. Once again, Ravenous, so if you cast it for five or more, you're gonna be drawing a card on top of getting a five, five. It has Trample, which is always nice. Uh, and when it deals combat down to a player, create that many one, one Tyranid creature tokens. So this is gonna be like making a massive amount of tokens for you, especially if you can give this some kind of evasion, it's gonna get out of control. Even without evasion, it has Trample, right? It's gonna get the job done. Anyway, 125 and Exocrine. I've actually featured Exocrine before on a video. I can't remember when, but um, X and two in a red. Once again, Ravenous. And when it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to each player and each other creature. Each player and each other creatures, including you and your creatures. So this is like a board wipe that hurts players as well. Um, it might be what you're looking for. If you've got some kind of life gain or shenanigans or something like that, this can go really well with that. Even if not, just don't cast for enough to take yourself out of the game. Easy enough, I think. Anyway, 50 cents. Number two. Oh, T. Oh, twinnings. What would I do without you? Not a sponsor. The wise Mothman. Oh no, here we go. It's Kirby. Hi. Hi Kirby, Hi. how are you? Please let me record Kirby, okay? Okay, see. <laughs> okay good. Anyway, the wise wa Mothman. Um, now I'm forgetting what this color combination is called. Ah, uh, it's one of my favorites, I should remember. Anyway, black, green, blue. Sultai, right. And uh, this is in 2,176 decks. This is a flying 3-3. Three, three. Four for a 3-3 three, three flyer. Not great, not terrible. Uh, whenever uh, the wise Mothman enters the battlefield or attacks, each player gets a rad counter. Okay, so this is using rad counters, which is a mechanic from the Fallout. Um, universes Beyond, that's what I was looking for, yeah. Fallout, Universes Beyond which is not maybe one of those universes beyond where I think like that doesn't really fit super well to match the gathering, but okay, you know what? Not gonna harp on that. Um, whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to X target creatures where X is the number of target non-land cards milled this way. That is huge, right? This does not say you mill, this is anyone mills. 
so you can build a mill plus one plus one synergy deck which is super super powerful um that's gonna be oh my son's back hi anyway it's gonna be very very strong yeah so any forcing anyone to mill including your opponents is going to be able to do that Two one seven six. Yeah, he's in two thousand one hundred seventy six decks, and he costs twenty five cents only. So cheap. So here I'm focusing more on the uh, getting people the mill thing. It's scary. Yes, it's it scary. is scary. It's scary. Kate Mason, the Mind Skinner, three blue mana for a ten one. It can't be blocked. If a source you control would deal damage to an opponent, prevent that damage, and each opponent mills that many cards. Can each opponent mills that many cards each right even if you get this through once they each have to mill 10 cards which is going to be like a whole lot of bonus for all of yours all of your creatures and oh, oh. oh uh, am I gonna sneeze I don't know and uh, yeah you if you throw this on the mind skinner the only real downside for him is that he's very easy to take out with damage um, you can start boosting him up really quick. And yeah, just uh, gonna be very, very powerful, right? 193, Bloat Fly Swarm for three and a black is a flyer and uh, technically zero, zero. It enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it. So it gets five plus one plus one counters. Um, if damage will be dealt to it, okay. it has, yeah, I know the fly is scary. Yes, it is. Thank you, um, Mason. Okay, buddy. It has. Uh, if it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage. Remove that many plus one plus one counters, and then give each player a rad counter for each plus one plus one counter. Remove that away. So this is going to keep those rad counters coming, and rad counters force people to mill, and they take damage. Uh, yeah, based on like how much they mill, and every time they exile a non-land card. They get to remove a rad counter, but the rad counters just stay until like they're gone, basically. So anyway, that's twenty-five cents. Uh, strong, the brutish thespian. I do love that. Anyway, for green, green for a seven-seven with ward two. Ward is better than nothing. And whenever strong is dealt damage, you get three rad counters and put three plus one plus one counters on strong. Okay, rad counters give you damage, so that sounds like a bad thing, right? But you gain life rather than lose life from radiation. So all those rad counters going off, usually it's going to take your life total down. It's going to go up, up, up instead. So you're still milling. So maybe it's not a great thing, but you're getting plus one, plus one counters. More, I should say. And then his Mothman's ability is giving you plus one, plus one counters on things. And you're mill going to be milling as well so that's actually just a whole bunch of useful 25 cents I forgot to say number one all right so I my son finally went to the computer and so he's distracted so we should be able to get to this one easy enough it's called Briar the Walking Grave uh, black uh, black green so again we got our Golgari 1-1 one, one. sounds not good but anyway First of all, haste, so that's a good start. Whenever Skullbriar the Walking Grave deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Okay. Gets a plus one, plus one counter. Whoa, yay. Okay, here's where it actually gets good. Counters remain on Skullbriar as it moves to any zone other than the player's hand or library. So unsummon is really bad for him. If someone uses something like unsummon, what you want to do is kill him right you want to send him straight to the graveyard you don't want him unsummoned or sent to the library you want to be able to control where he goes right if he goes to the command zone fine he keeps his counters if he goes to the graveyard hopefully you've got an even easier way to pull him out of the graveyard so you don't have to keep paying commander attacks but anyway i forgot to say he's in 4988 decks um that's a lot right that's a lot um Again, make sure that you've got like a, pretty much a sack outlet so that you can control when he is or how he is leaving the battlefield, I should say. That, yeah, 
She's all about, remember that you should have all kinds of different counters with this as well. You should have like things that hopefully grant flying, indestructible, all kinds of things, right? All right, I think I said 76 cents. And then Corpse, uh, Corpse Jack Menace, uh, he, two and Golgari, so black green for a four, four. This is a fungus. If one or more plus one plus one counters will be put on a creature you control, twice that many are put on it instead. Just doubling the number of plus one plus one counters, always. Crazy. Um, especially with his attack trigger, the one plus one plus one is not that impressive. Even going to two is a pretty big bump. Anyway, 75 cents. Daring Fiend Bonder, three in a black. Uh, so this is a Warlock with a, a five one with haste. During each, uh, he attacks each combat if able. Exile him from the, your graveyard. So he kind of looks like not good because he's a one five you have to attack with. So, but the point is to get him to your graveyard. So it does work. Anyway. For one a black, exile daring firebonder from your graveyard. Put an indestructible counter on target creature. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. So you're going to be putting an indestructible cre uh, counter on your commander. And then, yeah, just make sure he doesn't, like, go back to your hand or to your library. And then, uh, permanent indestructibility then. Finally, Evolutionary Leap. Okay, one and a green for this enchantment. Uh, one, pay one green, sacrifice a creature, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card, put that card into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is, what what is important here is that you've got a way to like, send him back to the command zone or send him to the graveyard, right? You want him to, like, if someone casts on summon or some kind of instant or sorcery that's going to send him back to your uh, library or to your hand, you take him out right away, right? So it's kind of weird to want to take your own commander out, but this is this guy calls for it. Anyway, 32 cents. The list. My Hi. son is back. Uh oh. Okay, the list. Here we go. Gargus Vicious Watcher is 25 cents. Uh, Bright Palm Soul Awakener, 25 cents also. Uh, Magus Lucia Kane, 53 cents. The Wise Mothman, 25 cents. That's one where I, I should pick up some because I bet you that is going to go up in value. Skullbriar, The Walking Grave, 76 cents. Um, all right, take it easy.